Hey guys, it's Doc. Today I'm going to show you how to backlap a gas reel mower. I'm going to do my true cut. It's really simple. It's really easy. It only takes a few minutes. People make it too complicated. So hold on one sec. Hey guys, I'm going to show you a simple way to backlap um, a gas reel mower. I guess you could apply this to like fist cars and stuff too, but it's pretty simple. I think a lot of people make it too complicated. Um, so I'll show you I'll show you me back lapping and then I'm gonna take it over I'm gonna cut the miracle patch over here, which is super super dense <laughs> That that grass is the most dense grass I've ever seen in my life Because it's not only is it beautiful common, but then we overseeded with a little bit of I forget what it was whether it was blackjack or Yukon or something so you got common Bermuda and you got hybrid sort of seed in there <laughs> fighting each other and it's just so thick it's amazing but um, yesterday I came out and I did kind of a hard cut on my lawn because we're getting ready to get some rain and temperatures gonna drop down and so I wanted to get rid of that summer Bermuda height in other words you might be at two inches and I want to bring it back down to one to a normal Bermuda height for the fall season. Plus, I just did a video on army worms. Uh, watch that video, it's really important. Uh, and this is a good time, if you're starting to see army worms, it's a good time to bring down your lawn some so you can really get to them easy. So let's go ahead, we'll just take a few minutes. Also, don't forget, click the subscribe button. The 2020 Bermuda grass calendar, which is brand new and interactive, will be out pretty soon. And I'll be doing a video up on that, so make sure you click uh, click the subscribe button. By the way, I have a fan running in the background because I'm hot, so you're gonna have to listen to the fan the whole time. Uh, go in here, and you want to make sure that your reel, that these grease hooks right in here are fully greased. So I use little yellow caps on mine. So I've already greased it up. All right, so the next step is what you want to do is you want to loosen the bolts on the side that actually tighten up and hold this hold this reel in place. Um, and let me show you this next step over here. So the next thing I'm doing is I took the main cover off right here. I'm putting all my parts. <laughs> I always put my parts right inside the cover, otherwise I lose it. The next thing I do, there's you'll find the little the connection link. You're gonna pop off this little piece. And then the this will pop off. Then the chain will separate, and I just lay my chain over here. So now this is what's gonna be driving it. Just take an electric drill with a driver bit in here. Make sure that it's nice and smooth. Don't break your wrists. <laughs> you leave yourself plenty of room and just, you want a variable speed drill, by the way. And it doesn't have to be reversible because when you hook up a drill the normal direction, the tightening direction, which is clockwise, it backspins this blade. So you do not have to have a reversible drill, but a variable speed drill does help. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply backlapping compound to these blades. So all I'm going to do is just apply some backlapping compound to these blades. I should get a towel and put a towel down here since I'm on the floor. But just right along the tip of all these blades, just sort of tap it on. Now this is basically um, if you've done any woodwork, it's kind of like a pumice. And as you sort of turn your blades, you'll sort of hear it. Hear that noise? That's the grit touching. Now remember, both sides are loose. They're very loose. So if the blade needs to move, the blade can actually move itself. Hey guys, let me make a point real quick that I don't think I stress enough in the video. And that is that when you first start off back lapping this with a drill, make sure both your sides are loose so that your blade has the ability to move up and down. Once you've back lapped for a while and you've gotten, you start to see metal 
and you're getting all the burrs off the blades, then you can start to slowly tighten those side, side mounts where you restrict that blade movement up and down a little bit more. And then I keep, what I do is I sort of tighten them down and tighten them down a little bit more and force that blade to have more and more contact against the bed knife. So the first thing I do is I start it off very loose so the blade can move and then I sort of slowly tighten those, those side things so it holds the blade more in place and I force more of that metal to metal contact. Um, do that slowly. So that's just one tip I forgot to mention I think in this video. I do have, by the way, I do have some blocks behind the wheels here. Again, you can break your wrist so be careful, it's slow. Now one thing I want to do when I do this is I want to watch and I want to make sure that I'm seeing a clean metal edge all the way across here. So I want to have contact all the way across. That's what I'm trying to do. Let me grab the camera and show you. By the way, one thing I forgot to mention, safety glasses. Because this stuff is going to be flying and it's got that grid in it. Alright, so I want to see a clean edge all the way across. Now see how this corner right here? that corner is not touching and so I'm probably gonna keep going until I get a fleen in over here too because believe it or not I want to have see if I can get that too but I'm starting to get a nice little edge on all it doesn't take much you don't have to do a whole lot of backlapping here I always like to start off with a, with a loose blade in here where it can go up and down on itself so it's very loose and it just sort of just sort of takes care of itself so it all rests and it evens out. if you can see or not, but I had a piece fly up in my face. That's why you want our safety glasses. Now one reason why you want to make sure that these uh, hub centers are full of grease is because we're going to rinse this off with water and we don't want the water going into those hubs. So let's just... Alright. So I got a little bit of shine over here, which is good. I got a decent amount going across on the edge here. I can definitely feel, I can definitely feel a sharp edge where this morning I was a little bit rounded. So, so what I'm going to do is now I'm going to, I'm going to gently tighten these down almost by hand and sort of lock them closer into the bottom. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm just taking these by hands just so that there's no play in this thing. Now I'm gonna tighten them down just a little bit more. All right, I'm gonna show you one trick on a, on a true cut, by the way. So when you have a true cut, this bolt plays a special action. So tighten these two, tighten these two down a little bit. But leave this one, this bolt will do fine tune adjustments left and right. It's weird how it does it. You tighten this side down, it might bring this down. You tighten that side, it might, it's just strange, but you can do minor adjustments with that. really 
sharp. Super sharp. So I'm good right there. So now that I see a nice, clean, sharp edge all the way across, everything's going to work. All the metal's going to work. I'm going to take this, come up underneath. Great cut. Great cut. Come up the other side. Great cut. So both sides are perfect. And I've locked them in, and I'm just going to leave it right there. So now I'm just going to rinse this off attach my chain back and I should be all set to go. All right, so here is the connection link right here. See that connection link? Got that all connected up. Now an important note, the chain goes under this tension bar here. <laughs> One time I did actually put it over it by mistake. Uh, the next day I fixed that. But this goes under that tension bar. Now when you tighten this, be careful because you, you want to have half an inch of slack in this chain right here. If you keep the chain too tight, you can actually result in a bent bar. That's why you're not supposed to have it tight. So all your chains are supposed to have half an inch of slack in them. do is I just lift her up, I put the block in here, get a piece of paper, yep, nope, that side's not cutting, so this side is fine, this side is not, so now you see why you always need to double check so here's what I'm going to do so this is where this third bolt comes in right here I can tell it's not touching the bed knife so if I tighten this now all of a sudden I can hear it touching cut down yep perfect this side yep perfect Now remember, I tested this several times over here, lapped it, rinsed it all off, retest it before you cut. And it's this bottom, this third lower bolt, this side, if I tighten this, it'll lower this side. If I loosen it, it'll raise this side. Same thing over here. So they, th these bolts play a fine tune adjustment on a true cut. I wanted to pop in real quick and show you this is uh, PGF complete right here in my stash that I've pre-ordered I did want to mention that there's an idiot on Amazon that's got this listed for like $80 a bag please don't buy it it's just over $30 a bag including shipping remember that so it's not $80 a bag it's 30 something dollars a bag So what I'm cutting today is I'm cutting the miracle patch over here and I'm trying to get it pretty low. Now this was 100% solid weeds last year and we came in, we killed off all the weeds and basically we've just stacked this thing four treatments over four months with PGF Complete. And let me tell you what, this stuff is so thick 
it's insane look at this <laughs> look at that that's better looking than my lawn now really thick now this is pretty much common Bermuda but we did overseed with some um, I can't remember if it was Yukon or blackjack that we put in here so it's mixed in so you'll see some fine and some coarse areas but you can see you can see the yellowing look because I'm taking it down pretty hard because it's just so thick and we're gonna be getting some rains in here so I need to I need to get it under control but man that that true cuts doing a fantastic job over here this thing is just so ruddy it is just if I take the John Deere over here it's just all scalp marks but with the uh, with the real cut or the true cut it just sort of smooths it out a little bit not completely a little bit So why am I blowing these clippings? I've learned this grass has become so thick over here, it's insane that the clippings will never settle in. They never fall in. They stay on top no matter what. Let me show you how thick this is. That, my friends, that is insane. <laughs> that is insane. This was all weeds a year and a half ago. Look at that. Hey guys, so I hope that helped on the um, on the real mower and backlapping. It really is simple enough. You can do it every few weeks. It's really quick um, and really easy. Don't forget, click the subscribe button, sign up for the email alerts. The new 2020 Bermuda Grass calendar is coming out, and I'll talk to you later. Doc, it's hot.